water, 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 water. Get the break. Beep, beep. Drip like Jam. Water, 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 water. Hit the break. Beep, beep. Get out of my way. Yo, what want me you? You're watching the Traffic Jam. All right, welcome everybody to another episode of Traffic Jam. Again, I'm not your regular host. I'm just filling in. And today we have another hilarious uh, New York comedian, uh, straight from his performance at uh, Comedy in Harlem. I think past this past Sunday. Uh, welcome everybody, Aldo. What's going on, everybody? Hey, Aldo. I'm Mark. Hey, what's up? Pretty good. Can't complain. Now, let me ask you a question. How long have you been doing comedy? Um, I started comedy when I was 25, and I'm 52 now. So you do the math. But I took a break from 1999 to two, 2007. What happened was my, uh, my mom was sick. My, da my dad passed away in 99. Then my mom was sick. My mom used to have emphysema. So when my mom passed away, excuse me, when my dad passed away, I'm the only, you know, I'm the only child. So I had to take care of my mom. So then when my mom passed in 2000, November of 06, I got back into comedy in 07. And uh, since 07, I haven't stopped. And it's been my full-time job now for 11 years. Well, I'm sorry to hear about the passing of both your mother and your father. We belong to that club. I just lost both of mine last year so i know i know how that is you know it's funny you know what you know it's funny thank you thank you i appreciate that what's funny is that you actually said which 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 always uh it's funny whenever when everyone asks me that question about the comedy and i always say you know my dad died in 99 and then i'll be like and then in 2006 my mom died everyone always says i'm sorry for the loss of your dad for your mom no one ever gives a crap about my dad. No, no one cares about that. We, we, we don't get the love. <laughs> Dude, it's so, it's so funny. It's always like, yo, man, I'm so sorry your mom passed. I'm like, well, what, which part did we forget about the dad? And I always get, well, I didn't have a father, so I don't even know how that feels. So I always find that funny. But you said both. So, <laughs> yeah, so I, know how, I know how it is. I lost mine, uh, my mother last year, and my father the okay. year before. So I'm still having a rough time dealing with it, but I know what it's like. I heard this, it wasn't a comedian. I forget who said this, but someone um, was talking about how life comes from the male, right? We mm -hmm. put the, we fertilize the egg and the woman carries it to term, right? So in a sense, they're carrying the baby for the male. But when the baby comes out, they disregard the father in, <laughs> entirely. You know, it's so funny. I just did someone's podcast and uh, they were, we were talking about that because they were talking about uh, stepbrothers and half brothers. So supposedly, if your father's the same father, then it's your half brother. But if you both have the same mom with different fathers, then that's your brother or your sister. Yo, you know what's funny you said that? So it's kind of, again, like what you said. Like, the guy gets no props out of all. So when my son was about, I don't know, maybe he was like 11. Don't get me lying about his age when he said this. When, but he was, he was young. And he said to mm -hmm. me that. He's like, um, Dad, you know, because he has a half-sibling with his mother. And he said, Dad, you know, if you have a half-sibling with your mother... That's your full sibling, but if you have a half sibling with your father, that's your half sibling. I'm like, listen to what you just said. If it's a half yeah, it's sibling, funny. it's a half sibling. If you don't share both parents, it's not a full sibling. I don't care which one it's with. And he, I said, where'd you hear that? He said he read that. I said you did not read that anywhere. But now hearing you say it, that must be out there somewhere. I don't know. Like I, I, I literally did someone's podcast last week, and um, we were talking about that. And when I mentioned what I said, they were like, so, yeah, so that's your half brother. But if it's your mom, then it's your whole brother. I'm like, how did you figure that? And they were like, well, because your, ma your mom carries you in the womb. I'm like, yeah, but without your dad, you wouldn't have been, you, there would have been no, nothing being carried in the womb. Right. And with your dad, you have the name. Exactly. 
Well, that's another thing that I that was so funny. That's another thing that I just um uh, someone told me the other day was whatever your whatever nationality your dad is, that's what overpowers what you right. are. Right. Because you carry the last name. Well, it's not because of the name, but it's because of the XY chromosome, which comes from the male. So whatever your father is. So if you have um, a white, say your wife is white, right? And you have a bunch of kids. Whatever nationality you are is really what the kids are. And it's not what the mother is. Which is funny because mm -hmm. we pick and choose when we want to do that, right? So I always say yeah. Obama, if he wanted to say he was white, he should be able to say that. Right? Because his mother right. is white and she raised him. But because black people, we always accept, you know, if, you know that half and half kid you grew up with, we always accept them. You're black, right? You go to their house and their mother's white or their father's white, her father's white. You still accept that person as black. We accept them. But really, they're both. Like, so when um, Tiger Woods was singing he was whatever he was, I feel why people got mad at him. But if he wants to identify as that, he should be able to because he's half whatever, you know, he is. And if, so if Obama came out and said, you know what, I, I'm, I'm a white man, we would crucify him. But he's half. So it's right. weird. It's totally weird. It's one of those mysteries in life that we're never going to answer. <laughs> yeah, I, I, seems like it. So I have a, a question speaking about male and female, right? Okay. I always thought about this. I see a lot of guys doing impressions. Godfrey does this hilarious um, Steve Harvey impression. Um, Avery Spears does hilarious impressions. Um, Pharaoh does impressions. Hilarious. But I don't see female comedians doing that. Is there any reason why you think females don't do impressions? You know what? I never thought of that. But it's true that I'm thinking of it. I never seen anyone do that. Right. Never. I wonder why. I guess they don't want to get their eyes scratched out. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, you know that's me. So you've been doing comedy for 30 years, roughly, right? What's, Almost, yeah. What's the best and worst thing you would say that's happened to you or your experience as being a comedian for the past 30 years? The best part to me doing comedy, even like um, like I said, I, I I perform during the day at senior centers. I do I do two show two shows a day, and the part that I like about doing comedy is, um, you never know what someone's going. There's so many times that I do a show, and someone will come up to me, and just literally thank me, because they had like a something just happened like terrible in their in their life. And they just needed to go out and I, and I made them forget about what was going on. That's like, I do, like I do senior centers during the day and uh, I really enjoy doing them. Like I go in there, I, I, like today, today was the first time I did one center I'd never been to. I walk in, I'm waving hello to everybody. And I, I, I you know, I do my, my, my thing. And then at the end I, I talk to them, but I, I pretty much don't do material. I pretty much freestyle with them and I interact with them. And because a lot of seniors, unfortunately, that's all they have. Sometimes being in a senior center is something better than staying at home, looking at four walls. You know what I mean? It's like they go there, they, they get to interact with other people. They get to see other people, but, but, but senior centers are funny because senior centers are like high school cafeterias. Meaning, remember when you were in high school, like you, you sat down on one table and that's your tape, that's your chair. It's like for four years you're in high school, whatever many years you are, that's always your place. Like everything is very clickish. And that's how it is in, in, in senior centers. Um, so to me, just putting a smile in someone's face and making someone's day, that's for me is uh, what I enjoy about doing comedy. Um, the part that sucks about doing comedy is when uh, you do a show and then at the end of the show, there's problems with the money. You know what I mean? With talking about, uh, oh, we didn't get that many people or this, you know, they will make an excuse. And that's the part. That's the only part I would, I think, 
that to me, my experiences is that. Okay. And um, that last one, we're getting ready to do our first uh, comedy special in Maine. So I hope I don't have that issue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like the, that's why when I put like, you, uh, as you see, I produce shows also. And one of the rules I always do is when I produce shows, I always tell the the promoter or the venue, I need to get paid before the show starts. And that's just to, what I like to do is after each comedian gets off stage, I just like to pay them. Because, you know, you're welcome to stay, hang out. But if you want to leave, you can leave. You got paid already. And if the show's canceled, I need half the bread. You know what I mean? I need half the money to pay myself. But it's mostly, t for me, it's more about paying the comedians than me. Because it, it could be, you could be the, the promoter. But if I'm the one that booked the show and I'm hosting the show, that's my show. So I always like to keep a, a clean slate and, a, you know, a good name behind my name. So I always try to do the right thing for everybody. Now that everyone does that, you know, they'll call you, hey, man, the show's canceled today. The show's supposed to be at 6. It's 5.10, <laughs> you know? But I'm not like that. When something gets canceled, I'll let you know. I'll be like, yo, I'm, I'm going I'm to cash app you half the bread. Because it's like, you know, it's just, it's just good karma. Right, right. All right, I want to play um, a little game. A little game I call um, One Got to Go. Right? So I'm going to name two people. Are you good? Are you going to tell me the lineup for your May show and I'll tell you who got to go and you can book me? <laughs> <laughs> that no. one got to go. <laughs> well, no, I'm not going to do that. But I'm going to name two funny. people or two things, right? Okay. And you're going to pick the one you want. And the one you don't want got to go. So let's say I say um, Pepsi or Coke. And you want Coke, hey. Pepsi got to go. And you have to say Pepsi got to go. Okay, I get it. All right? I understand. You ready? Let's do it. All right. Um, Beyonce or Janet Jackson? Oh, that's a big, like, that's a big throw. Um... <laughs> You know what I mean? Because you're talking about something that's like Beyonce's like popping now, and Janet Jackson. You know, I love Janet Jackson. I used to buy the records and everything, but you know what I mean? It's like, which one got to go? Ugh. I know y'all get. I don't know. This is ah, man. It's like I don't want people to hate me. Be like, what you mean? She got to go. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna keep Beyonce. All right. So if you keep Beyonce, what's that mean? And then, and then Janet Jackson got it. You know, it's so funny. I, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if my wife's on the phone in the back, but I hear no. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Wow, my wife's in the back screaming. No, get rid of Beyonce. Wow, <laughs> well, I, well, if you want to eat or sleep safe, you got to do that. No, it's okay because I'm 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 I already cooked dinner, so. <laughs> um, damn, I don't know, bro. Hmm. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna. I don't care. I don't care what she said. I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna keep Beyonce. And that means. And then Janet Jackson got it. All right. Well, the tough Next. one because you gave me you gave me something from like. What late? What was the last thing? She made a record, like late 2000s. Janet, I don't know. I just know she was... Exactly. Here. You know what I mean? That'll be like me saying to you, uh, who would you rather uh, see in a movie? Uh, Mark, War Ma Mark Wahlberg or Fred Savage? Like, you know what I mean? Like, we haven't seen Fred Savage since the Wonder Years. But that's the point. Gotta, gotta be tough. Gotta be tough. Uh, all, right, all right. I see so what you're playing here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the next one, mac and cheese or McDonald's fries? What kind of mac and cheese, though? Box or fresh? Whichever you think is the best. I'm going to keep mac and cheese, bro. So that means... Because, you know, McDonald's fries got to go. Because you know <laughs> what? If, you can find a McDonald's fry under the refrigerator from three years ago. still look the same. But I'll tell you that mac and cheese is going to change color. So you know which one's healthier for you. 
Well, you, you know what? Mac and cheese. Is kind of, <laughs> you got to put five cheeses in it, though. I'm going to keep mac and cheese. Okay. And All McDonald's right. fries got to go. Okay. Next one. Denzel Washington or Idris Elba? I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep that. Oh. So that means what? The other guy got to go. <laughs> All right, five million dollars cash or eight thousand dollars a month for life. Eight thousand dollars a month. For life, yep. All right, so, so, so you say five million dollars? Mm -hmm. Cash. All Cash, one. five million dollars, or eight thousand dollars a month for life. Hmm. Well, you know what? I'm pretty good with where I'm at right now in my life, mm -hmm. so I'm going to go with the extra eight thousand dollars a month. Because if I get five million dollars, I know I'm going to spend that shit. <laughs> I'm going to buy stuff that I don't need. But I'm gonna go with the eight thousand dollars a month because then you know, you know, you, you know what I mean. Because five five million dollars seems like a lot, but you can. I don't know how many years I got left in my life, but I think I could waste five million dollars before eight thousand dollars a month. So five million dollars, what? Gotta go. Okay. I'm gonna take eight thousand a month. Here's the big one. And, and and large bills, please. I don't got time to be counting on. All right, here's the big finale. Oh, Lord. Michael Jordan or LeBron James? I'm not really a sports guy. Okay. So I'm going to go, <laughs> go with Michael Jordan because everyone always says he's the best and because he, everyone rocks his sneakers. So that, means, that, so that means what? Le LeBron James? LeBron James got to go. <laughs> all right. So I saw um, my interview. First of all, thank you for playing that game. I think it's fun. Thank you. Um, I saw an interview with Ice Cube one time. I don't remember who he was interviewing with, what podcast. I don't remember, but I remember this question. Um, he said there was a class that he did not want to take when he was in high school, or he was a teenager. He did not want to take this class. He tried to get out of taking the class, but he ended up having to take the class. He hated it, didn't want to do it. But while in that class, he met this kid, and this kid asked him, have you ever wrote a rhyme? And he was like, no. So you know what? All right, let's, let's write, I'll write a rhyme, and you write a rhyme, and let's see who has the best rhyme. And that's when Ice Cube wrote his first rhyme. And he hasn't stopped since. So if he didn't take that class, he probably we probably want to have Ice Cube, no Friday, no NWA. No, so it's the, the class point. poetry. Right. So that's the point in his life that, that was the turning was a turning point. That's to turn him into right. Ice Cube. Do you have that for yourself? That there's something that happened that made you go into comedy, or you would be working at UPS now instead? Well, um, the way I got into comedy was I used to work. I used to work at a shoe store on uh, in the village, in New York, New York City. We, a Street used to be the, the shoe district back in the day. So I used to work in a store there, and a comedian came in. I'm gonna tell you how I got into comedy. This comedian came in selling tickets to his one man show, and um, I always liked comedy. And I remember I asked him how long you've been doing comedy. He told me uh, 13 years. And I said, uh, what's your name? He told me his name. I was like, dude, you must suck because I never heard it. <laughs> you know, true story. Um, and the way I got into comedy was a year passed. Now I'm managing the same store. And um, the guy remembers my name, Aldo, right? And I'm, I'm, I'm outside Windexing. I'm managing the store. I'm Windexing my window. And he's like, uh, what you been up to? I was like, not, not too good. You know, things are rough right now. I'm homeless. I'm washing windows. He's like, I'm so sorry to hear that. And I'm like, asshole, it's the same store. I'm the manager. So he put me on stage the next day. And from that day, that was it. I never did an open mic. I never did a bringer show. It was just off the head. I was just talking about how I met this guy. I was making fun of the comedy show. I mean, excuse me, the comedy club. Um, so I always sold shoes my whole life. So till my last job, which I said I haven't had a job in 11 years, um, I was still selling shoes. I was working on Fifth Avenue 
I worked on Fifth Avenue for almost twelve, almost twenty years. You know what I mean? So I always made I made really good money because it was high end fashion. So anyone that you see in all these high end stores on Fifth Avenue, everyone's making six figures. Um, but it's a little different. You know, I do comedy now, but uh, I do miss working. I'm not gonna lie to you. I, I, you know, I, I, uh, I enjoyed it. I was good at it. Um, but I also like doing comedy. I'm my own boss. I don't got to answer to nobody. But it's a little tough. Okay. So is stand up the goal for you? Because I've heard some comedians say that they do stand up and they have aspirations of being an actor and getting into Hollywood, you know, big motion pictures. Um, yeah, that's that's one thing that I always been interested in since I was younger was acting. Um, I'm really good at comedy. Comedy wasn't something that I always wanted to do. Like, you know, when you're, you know, when comedians go, I always wanted to be a comedian since I was little. I always wanted to be a chef since I was little. Like, till this day, uh, before I was on this, this thing with you, I was watching the Food Network. I just love cooking. My wife thinks I'm obsessed with food. But I enjoy cooking um, and stuff like that. But um, comedy, don't get me wrong, I love doing comedy. But I do love, I, I, I do want to pursue comedy to get into acting. Um, probably comedy movies or anything. I'm, I'm fluent in Spanish. Probably something in Spanish. Whatever. You know, I'm very open to whatever it is. Uh, but I was, I had an agent for four years. Got a couple of commercials a few years back. But yeah, that's my goal. I would love to have uh, like my own sitcom. Um, I always been interested in uh, Saturday Night Live, SNL. I like improv. I'm really good at, uh, you know, freestyling and improvising. I, I did improv a couple of years back and I was really good at it. Um, I wish I knew how to get an audition for Saturday Night Live, but I might be too old for that show. But I always, uh, yeah, I, I love acting. That would, if that would be my goal to transition from stand up to acting, a million percent. Um, tell us where you're going to be at next. What you got coming up? Um, off the, off the head, I don't know, but I have, uh, I, I do two shows that I run in, uh, in New, in New Jersey, actually. I'm from New York, but I run two shows in New Jersey. They're very beautiful restaurants. There's these two high end restaurants. One's called Son Cubano in West New York and uh, Ventana in Lodi. Um, so I'm going to have that. You can just follow my social media. My website's down right now, but uh, my Instagram is Aldo Laugh, as I wrote it here somewhere. <laughs> A-L-D-O-L-A-U-G-H. I always post the shows. Um, so yeah, hopefully, uh, Mark, we, uh, we chop it up in person one day. And uh, keep me in mind for the, uh, after your next show, you know, hope I wish you nothing but the best with your upcoming show. And um, I've been hearing good things about this uh, podcast. So I'm happy that you uh, invited me. It was fun. Even though, even though I know a couple of y'all hating on me because I said Beyonce over Janet Jackson, but we need to get over it. That was, that was about 12 minutes, 12 minutes ago. <laughs> Thank you for coming on, sir. And uh, good luck at your next show. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Drip life, Damn. water, 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 water. Hit the break. Beep, beep. Drip life, Damn. water, water, Hit the break. Beep, beep. Get out of my way. Yo, what want me, you? You're watching The Traffic Jam.